deep fly ball. Oh, what a catch! Oh my goodness! That one is gone! Ball drive is the goal! Ball drive! A ball! Since the creation of MLW in the fall of 2009, it was evident that the Western Wildcats ruled the league. It was just a great time to be a Wildcat. I mean, me and Tommy, whoever we were playing, we just knew we were a better team then. You know, what me and Kyle had going was pretty special. We were just so dominant. We were clicking on all cylinders. Great chemistry. We could both pitch. We could both hit. You're probably never going to see a team like that in this league ever again. The duo of Kyle Schultz and Tommy Coughlin went a combined 81 and 17 from 2010 to 2013, winning three out of four World Series titles. The Wildcats win the World Series! Playing with the Wildcats from 2010 to 2013 were probably some of my favorite memories playing with the ball, and that's when it really became the dynasty that you guys all know it as today. One and two. And that is caught by Kyle Schultz! Line drive, fair home run! <laughs> the Wildcats would collect two more titles in 2014 and 2015, this time with a new cast of characters including Noah Dabrico, Ryan Gable, and Kyle Garricky, further cementing the Wildcat legacy. And this is gonna, gonna do it and the Wildcats have won the World Series for 2015. At this point in time, MLW had been around for six years and the Western Wildcats looked virtually unstoppable. However, in 2016, that all changed. High drive and gone! Home run! Got him swinging! And the Eastern Eagles win game one. Yeah, that was the first time we really faced some adversity. I mean, they, we just got beat down. And that ball, off the fence in center field. And that ball is out of here. Clayton Price breaks this game wide open. I just remember Daniel Kane us on the mound. Uh, Clayton, Ryan, Daniel all hitting homers off me. If it's fair, it's out of here. And it is. And that ball is gone. Back to back the Eagles. When I was commentating, I don't know if you guys remember, but I commentated the uh, 2016 World Series, and to see the Wildcats kind of just get manhandled by the Eagles a little bit, it was just weird to see where the franchise had gone since I left. It's full count pitch, lobbed, swung on, yeah. and it's gone. Yeah. Strike three, you got him. And the Eagles have finally done it. After seven long years. Eastern Eagles have won a World Series. And right then and there, I knew the tide, is, the tide turned and that we weren't going to be the most dominant team in the league. Full count. Oh! And a shot to left field. And then, so coming back next year, 2017, uh, with a whole different team, and it was kind of the same story. In the postseason, we played the Cobras, uh, and we just, we weren't even competitive. 2-2. Two -two. Oh! Oh, not far enough. And the Cobras are going to their first ever World Series. During these two seasons, the team had lost their sense of identity, going a combined three and six in the postseason. They had strayed away from their days of glory, and it was now up to Kyle Schultz to make changes. So it was no surprise to me in 2017, after they got knocked out by the Cobras, that Kyle was gonna make some moves. And he did, and it worked out for him. Yeah, I knew changes were needed to be made if we wanted to get back to our winning ways. So I had to make some roster changes if that meant Waylon leaving or the Rulies leaving. I knew I had to bring in some new guys. And so 
Uh, one of them, Zach Pirock, uh, recently in that 2017 summer, he was a friend of Tommy's and he actually came over for a scrimmage. He knew about MLW just a little bit, uh, just from Tommy talking about it a little bit, but he came out and he played a game with us at Colts Field. And I just remember throwing one of my signature risers and he hits a bomb off it, like deep center, like over the tree or something. And I just remember right there, I'm like, this kid's gonna be a good wiffle ball player. He's got promise. So coming out here with Tommy, I honestly expected it to be easy. I remember you struck me out. You struck me out like three times in a row and I was taken aback. And then I finally hit a home run and that was the greatest feeling because I witnessed the lows of wiffle ball and the highs of wiffle ball. So that always stuck with me heading into that off season. And then the, the time came around when I, I knew I needed a new player and Zach came to mind. And I told him I wanted him from the team and he was ecstatic and I was just happy to have him on board. I was excited first of all because I just wanted to be in the league. I watched the YouTube page, I saw the glory that the players received and I wanted that. But I didn't really know what to expect because the Wildcats, the last few years they weren't the best. I mean the Mallards powerhouse just coming up so I, I didn't know about being on the Wildcats but I was just excited to be in the league. So I did want three players on the roster going into the 2018 season. I would seen how efficient and good the Mallards were in 2017 with a three-man roster and I knew we'd prosper with three guys. So I was looking for that one last guy who would bring good morale, good on-base percentage, just a guy that would always show up, and that guy was Ryan Kelly. I was surprised and really excited because after my brief stint on the Astros, I felt like I had some unfinished business in the league. The Astros, I don't think I ever won a single game. We weren't good, we didn't hit well. I was one of the better players on the team, and I was excited to get back and leave a more concrete mark on the league. The roster was now set, and the Western Wildcats turned their heads to a pivotal 2018 season. I think with hard work this year, the Wildcats might be back on top. Heading into the opening day series, our opening day series against the Seahawks, I felt good about our team. And we came out there, and we just annihilated the Seahawks. It wasn't even competitive in any of the games. Pirac was beast that series, and I shut it down on the mound. God, I'm looking. I thought it was going to be easy because I was in a very competitive baseball season. I know I mentioned it on podcasts before, but that baseball season I faced 15 Division One pitchers. I thought well, football was going to be easy compared to that, and it just wasn't. And even though I had success in the first game, and especially you carried the team, I it, it was different, and I started to realize this might be a long season at the plate for me. Ground ball, back to the mound, got him at two. Let's go, man! Double play! I felt really good about our team because I thought we had a lot of good pieces. I thought we had Kyle who could pitch and could hit, Zach who was a bit of the wild card, and then I could kind of back them up by just getting on base and playing well in the field. Long drive, grand slam! Is it better? Oh! 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 A grand slam by Kyle Schultz! Schultz takes him yard! Another grand slam! Yeah, I just approached the Eagles series like any other series. Um, I just I just turned out to have a really good day at the plate, hitting three grand slams, I think it was a record. And right then and there, I think we we set a real statement in the league. You know, we start out 3-0, but it was against the Seahawks, so nobody really took it seriously. But after we swept a really good team in the Eagles, I think that finally began to turn some heads. The one, two. Ah, he watches it! Kyle gets out of it! Long drive! This one is gone! Austin Ford's first home run! Ford, I, it was a hanging riser and he just it hit a bomb off me. And we lose that game. Pop up and caught and a double play! They haven't tagged him yet! They got him there, and the game is over. It would have been nice to go into the All-Star break with a perfect record, but it was a kind of a reminder that we're not perfect, no one else is perfect, but we still have that stronghold on the league that hopefully we can continue in the second half. It would have been nice to be 9-0, and and so it was a sour taste, but it, I was still very optimistic for the postseason in the second half. At 8-1, and one, the Wildcats boasted the league's best record at the break. However, entering the second half of the season, adversity would start to escalate. Long drive, this one's going to center field! Long drive, this one's gone! It's 2-0 Prez. 
Yeah, so the series against the Preds was definitely the low point of the season. Uh, we played in a time where we hadn't had rain in two weeks or so, so the field was just scorched, it was all dirt. Um, and we came out and won the first game by a very close margin on a Zach Pirock walk-off home run. Long drive, this is gone! A grand slam for Zach Pirock! So, Ryan's a fun kid, and Ryan loves, loves the banter of the game. So Ryan and I were going at it all game, and I finally finally get a pitch I can hit. This is the point in the season where I was kind of struggling, you know, transitioning that baseball swing into a wolf ball swing. I finally get one off Ryan, and it was ecstatic. It was like the weight of the world lifted off my shoulders. We do get their number on the first game with Pirox home run, walk-off home run, but games two and three, I mean, honestly, they dominated us. It wasn't even close. Got him looking strike three. Got him swinging and a miss. Ryan gets out of it. Swing and a miss, two down. Swing and a miss, and the Preds win three to two and take the series two out of three. And especially with that addition of Ryan Cratch, they just they just knew how to get after it. And it was hard to counter their energy, and we did drop the second two second two games in that series. So yeah, we lose three of our last four after that series. I mean, and Cratch shut us down at the plate. I didn't get I think I got like one hit that whole series. Like I was awful. So, I mean, that really turned the tide of the whole season. The Wildcats were able to clinch the division despite going on a 3-4 and four skid to end the season. And although they would have the number one seed going into the postseason, the team knew that they weren't playing their best wiffle ball. Yeah, it was, it was a rough finish, honestly. So, I mean, I'm thinking, here we go again, just like 2016, just like 2017. But then I realized, all right, Pirac is going to be the rookie of the year. He's clutch, he gets home runs. Uh, he had one against the Preds, and then I got my guy Kelly with me, gets walks, get on base, one of the highest on-base percentages in the league, and I think to myself, we're the best team in this league, and it's really not even close, so I'm thinking, okay, we should definitely win this World Series, and we're not going to settle for anything less. What's up guys, welcome to the 2018 ALCS, we got a great matchup today between the Western Wildcats and the Coastal Cobras. See, all year I thought we had a lot of fun, right? We, we wanted to win the game, but the environment was always a good camaraderie with the other team. It was really enjoyable to be there. Like, of course you want to win every game. You're there to win. But say you lose, at least it wasn't time wasted. The postseason was the opposite. You're not talking to the other team, right? Like, some of your great friends are on the other team. You, you don't really care. It is now, if you don't win, this whole summer kind of has been a waste. So that was definitely a different element I did not expect. Um, so the Cobras were a bit of a fan favorite. They had a lot of talent. Blew a, what, three game or two game lead in the World Series before that. So they were looking for a little bit of revenge. Um, but luckily enough, right off the bat, you could tell that we just had their number. All right, base is still loaded. That one is gone! A grand slam for Kyle Schultz! I think we scored five runs in the first inning or something. And just, demol like, the series was never close. Yeah, it was the most focused I've ever been coming into a series. Uh, just knowing how they beat us the year before. So I just remember thinking, all right, I'm not going to let that happen again. Got him. Got him. Got him. Schultz strikes out the side. Great start for the Wildcats. And from that first inning of that first game, we knew we were the better team. Put this in your pocket. It overheated. Oh, and that one's gone! Let's go, Kyle. Kyle Schultz. I don't like I don't like. Oh, Pirac goes oppo, and he broke it open. See, it was an interesting day because I think Drew's facial expressions kind of set it off. Drew came out very excited. Drew's the most pat behind probably Kyle. Drew is probably the second most passionate kid in the league. He lives for wiffle ball. So he came in with all this enthusiasm, and just seeing him crushed kind of showed how the Wildcats set the tone that day. The 0-2 pitch coming from Kyle Schultz. Got him strike three, and the Wildcats punch their ticket for the World Series. First time since 2016, and the Western Wildcats are back. I was hyped. Uh, it was just great to be out with those guys and to just feel that energy of winning and moving on to the World Series, because you know the guys wanted to be there. Um, even though we were kind of on top all season, every game, every win in the postseason is a big win. So we had to really focus, and it just felt great to be able to go to the World Series. Yeah, I strike out Drew for the final out. Um, uh, we were all happy, we were excited, but we knew the job was not done yet. We weren't satisfied at all. See, I guess the ALCS wasn't as significant, because it's like, 
We won 8-0 at the start of the year. We weren't playing for an ALCS. We were playing for the World Series. So it was great, right? It was like, okay, we needed to win this to move on. But it, our, my eyes were really set from the beginning on that World Series. So although it was nice, it wasn't. I didn't feel any fulfillment yet. In order to win the World Series, the Western Wildcats were going to have to get past the Midwest Mallards, a team that not only won it the year before, but featured the reigning MVP and Cy Young Award winner. I just remember going home after the Cobra Series thinking, all right, Wildcats, Mallards, Kyle versus Tommy, the two legends of the league, as people like to say, and, you know, just the hype around the series was insane, and uh, I knew it was going to be a series for the ages. So the Mallards were really, really scary. Um, looking at them throughout the regular season, and it became even more apparent through the postseason when Steve McPeak started hitting, they really didn't have a weak spot. And part of what we did is attack the weak spots of other teams. So when they didn't have the glaring weaknesses of the year before, when they still won the World Series, it was really tricky. One thing is Noah is unpredictable. That kid can plan out hit. And uh, so you never know how, how a World Series is gonna bring the best out of somebody, and I think the best out of Noah is dangerous. Tommy's pitching, I was nervous about that. Incredible pitcher, so a bit, a bit of nerves for the series, but still confident. Yeah, so we sat down as a team and sat down and tried to figure out exactly how we can utilize all of our strengths and weaknesses to win the World Series. So we had Kyle who could do it all, we had Zach who showed flashes of brilliance, and then I had to kind of deliver that consistency so that when they did hit home runs, we could get another run out of it. And once I kind of settled into my role, I think is when we really got rolling as a team, and we were able to get on base and then deliver those runs. Welcome to the 2018 World Series with a great matchup between the Western Wildcats and the Midwest Mallards. The only thing that can happen in a series like this is five games series. So uh, we're not going to be intimidated by the record. You know, I think this is going to be a hard-fought battle, a lot of heart. Uh, this will be a rivalry between Kyle and Tommy. So yeah, going into game one, super intense. Uh, just everybody's focused. Not, not a lot of, like, talking between each other. Uh, it's very just kind of, like, competitive, very just hostile, I would say, between the two teams. Welcome to the 2018 World Series. Full count. One, two. Swing and miss. Absolute pitching duel between me and Tommy. Very quiet first couple innings. And then in that third inning, we got Kelly on second base. Uh, I'm at first, and we got Purak coming to plate, someone we really liked. Purak. Left side! Fair ball, Kelly's going home! And he misses! And the Wildcats win! Steve makes a great play actually off that wall and he chucks it in. I'm running to second base so I don't have a great view at it, but when I saw the ball pass the net, I didn't see it hit anything. So instantly I thought we'd won the game there. And then I hear Tommy say, Catch win oh, game! Go, 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 go. Went to the corner, he's out. So then we all huddle around the uh, cameraman, which was Daniel at the time, and we all watch it back. And evidently, uh, they were right, it did go through the little slot uh, where the net should have been. I was devastated, to be honest. I mean, I initially, my goal coming into the World Series was to contribute, right? I wanted to make an impact on our World Series championship. So I'm like, this is finally my moment. You know, I did it. I drove in the run. The game proceeded to be a pitcher's duel with Tommy and Kyle not allowing a single run and combining for 23 strikeouts in the game. However, in the bottom of the sixth inning, Kyle Schultz came up to bat. Left side, and Pjark's going home! And he's safe! Yes! The call is safe right now. The Cats have won game one. And I was, I was just excited because that was such a hard fought game and the momentum of game one in a five game series is just, it's incredible. So we're going crazy. Obviously it's huge to win game one. It sets the tone for the whole day. Just gaining the confidence, knowing that even though I, I was confident before, knowing that we actually can beat this team consistently, it was, uh, I knew we had it after that game. Oh! Deep fly ball! Oh, what a catch! Oh my goodness! What a catch! You have got 
got to be kidding me! So, no is always dangerous, Deep. I mentioned that earlier. And I, I saw the wall off his bat, and I thought it was gone. Well, I, I initially thought it was gone, and then I realized I had a chance to catch it. My route on that ball was horrible. I'm like, I'm going to mess this up. This is going to be really bad for us. And I just remember, like, flipping my hips, turning, and somehow catching it. And then we go crazy. And like that was the moment it was just like this is this is incredible. I knew it was I knew it had a greater significance than just like an out in that game. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just ridiculous. And as soon as he caught it, you just get that burst of adrenaline, like, oh my god, he did it. We're still tied, we're still in this thing. I remember Tommy talking to me that previous offseason saying that um, you know, if we have a insane play, we gotta set it in the sports center. Right when Pirac made that play, I'm like, okay, that that play was it. That was the one. Weeks later when that video was posted. We uh, we post on our Instagram and we have all our fans tag them, and so sure enough, that night we tune in, and uh, number nine play comes up, and I see uh, John Butchergrass talking about MLW wiffle ball. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> oh my god! Let's go! Oh my god. <laughs> so I, I just walked through the whole dorm and told everybody I was on Sports Center. Like, I mean, everybody. I put it on my Snapchat story. Like, everybody knew, like, I, I'm the Sports Center guy. Like, I made it. You didn't. Like, it was, it was so awesome. Oh, center field! That one's gone. And a shot from Daverko, his second of the game. Yeah, so Noah actually, after that play later in the game, he actually hit two home runs off of me, and it was, it was, it sucked. One, two, pitch. Got him swinging. Mallards win game two with a score of six to nothing. Tie it back up one to one. After game two, there would be a break in the World Series action. The rest of the games would be played the following day, and this gave the Wildcats some time to make adjustments. So I go home, I actually, I was sore because I had pitched, I think, 15 innings in two days. So I literally went home and I took an ice bath to make sure I wasn't sore the next day. But I knew that Noah was killing my risers, so I had to make a change. Um, I decided to go more drop and fastball based against him, not giving him any risers because I knew he'd destroy them like he always does. So I just had to really be focused and kind of understand the momentum or the the momentous occasion that was upcoming in the in the next day of World Series games. So I was like anxious. I just kind of wanted it to happen. First pitch. First pitch to Kyle Schultz. A shot to center field, and it's one nothing Wildcats. That was huge. I mean, I knew that was what we what we needed. Um, you know, to set the tone like that instantly. We're up one nothing. So coming off and being able to show that Tommy was mortal, that he could give up home runs once in a while, that was important for us and for our lineup because we knew that we could hit him. And that is going to win it for the Wildcats. Purock, the hero in game three. It was just, it was exciting to say the least, and uh, happy to deliver for the Cats. Yeah, we knew we needed to end the Mallards then and there because if you keep them around, you know, only bad things can happen, obviously, looking at the year before when the Cobras did that. If we left too much time for them, that they would take care of us. And we wanted to make sure that they didn't have the time to come back and perform heroics like that before. So we wanted to just stomp them out while we could. Game four. Shot to right. Purex going three. And that is huge for the Wildcats. Very similar to the games against the Cobras, where it starts and you just automatically know you're in the driver's seat. You know, our guys wanted to win it. We came out swinging. Um, we put runs on the board early. And as soon as you do that, not only do you kind of instill that confidence in yourself, you automatically demoralize the other team. Single for Purak. Kelly's coming home. Uh, Purak and Kelly got on base. They were starting to see Tommy really well. 
Round ball. Sharks coming home. Another run for the Cats. Oh, Ford with a home run. Austin Ford. Like, how does he keep doing this to us? I mean, it was... Ugh. Left field, oh, off the scoreboard. Six to five, it is a one run ball game. When he can come up in situations like that, that's when we're in trouble. And the Mallards lineup is just so strong throughout. We had such a big lead, and I guess I just got a little too comfortable out there. Started hanging some pitches. Thankfully, we get out of the inning, uh, and then we go ahead and we get a, a nice insurance run in the next inning, which is huge. Not a lot of people think about that run. Miss, and that is another run for the Wildcats. And then bottom of the third, instantly, yeah, we get a pop-up, and we get that first out, which is huge. Fly ball, one down. Next play, a ground ball to Ryan Kelly. He's been solid all day. Up the middle, got him. Great defense. Yeah, so normally there'd be some nerves in the last inning, but with the other balls that got hit to me on the day, I felt more confident. I kind of knew what I'd do if I got the ball hit to me. Yeah, I, I see Tommy Coughlin coming to the plate, third guy of the inning. I remember telling myself to stay away from anything good. So I, I think I got two strikes on him. I throw him a hard fastball. It dips down right into the strike zone area. He puts contact on it like he always does. Yeah, so Tommy had a hard ball and it bounced a lot. And I just had to kind of get in front of it and scoop it up. Full count pitch. Ground ball, and he got him! The Wildcat defense comes through, and they have won the 2018 World Series. Seven to five in four games. Let's go! And uh, I thought that play kind of encapsulated our season really well because even though Kyle carried our team, I think we had that, that sense of teamwork and being able to make a play like that and toss it to Kyle for the win was, was special. And I remember like us just hugging and falling to the ground and just freaking out, like finally, like this was, we fulfilled our goal. It all came together. I feel like it was, we were one of the greatest wiffle ball teams assembled in MLW and I think it showed. Wildcats were an incredible group of guys. It was very interesting to see it come together with with Zach, a kid I just met this year, and coming back from my Astros days. And uh, I could tell the whole entire season how badly Kyle wanted to win it all, especially with how well he was playing and the effort he put in to win the league in its best season yet. And recruiting in the off season, it just it kind of felt like there was no option other to win it. I think it's going to be that moment where we were kind of rolling around on the ground, and it was just like relief, like because you had such a great season and. Essentially, I just wanted to compliment that and win a World Series because of all the work you put in the league. So I'm going to remember most uh, how you carried the team and how we could compliment with that. Just the guys I shared it with. I mean, Zach and Ryan, we just grew together so much closer during that summer. Um, I'm always going to remember just the fun we had, the wins we put together, um, just the teamwork we had. Uh, I mean, just Pirac getting clutch homers, Kelly being a morale boost. I'm trying to do my thing on the mound at the plate. So putting it all into perspective, uh, you know, we had the early glory days for the Wildcats in the early 2010s and then a little rough patch later on in like 2016, 2017. And when we got that final win against the Mallards, I knew then and there we were here to stay and that we had returned to prominence. and you quickly became known as the jacked guy in the league. <laughs> How did that make you feel? And is that a good testament to your uh, weight room time? Uh, I thought it was funny because kind of throughout the season, I was putting on a lot of weight. <laughs> and so I was really working hard in the weight room. So it was nice to see the, uh, the fans recognize that and expect, That's awesome. expect an even bigger and better version of me next summer. <laughs>